This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. Doing the most is is largely community driven. We have a Discord server at discord.doingthemost.org and that'll take you there. We do a lot of homebrewing stuff. And there's a lot of other projects going on in the Doing the Most community. And inspired by the community vibe that the Doing the Most community has, we decided we would start a community brew show here on Twitch. There's not a lot of homebrewing content on Twitch. We're trying to change that. So we'll see what happens. So thank you all for tuning in. I want to also throw a big shout out to our patrons and our VIP members. Y'all are amazing. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for funding this. If you're not a VIP member, that can be done through YouTube. Just click the join button on any of our videos on YouTube, or we have a Patreon. That link is available on the sidebar of our website at doingthemost.org. Or if you'd like, you can just donate through our Streamlabs link until we uh, make, make Twitch happy with our stream and we can uh, do donations through, through the Twitch platform. First thing we've got to do is we've got to pick our fermentable sugar. So y'all chose wine. I feel like the wine category mostly covers what you would call country fruit wines. Country fruit wines are typically wines made with fruit that is mixed with water and fermentable sugar usually cane sugar, dextrose or brown sugar, and then ferment it into a kind of wine. You're gonna want three to four pounds of fruit per gallon of your brew. So it's the type of thing that you would brew in a bucket, usually. I really tossed around the idea of doing a country fruit wine. Uh, and I think visually it's fun, but I wanted to save that for later. What I wanted to do on this episode is mix up a wine with juice and then make some amendments to that with our other options. Yeah, Kyle, the Discord is really cool. You should check it out. There's a lot of memes on the Discord, which I'm like a huge fan of. So our fermentable sugars for this round come in the forms of juices. First off is the one that I was leaning toward the most. And I don't want to, I don't want to, to color the conversation with my opinion at all, but I think it would be the most fun one of all of them. And I think it would lead to the best final product. And I believe it's the most expensive ingredient this week. So there's that. Does anyone feel like ranch dressing is just like, ranch dressing is the meal and any component consumed with ranch dressing is just the vehicle to get the ranch dressing from the plate into your mouth? Celery, carrot sticks, broccoli florets, chicken wings, pizza, mozzarella sticks, onion rings, french fries, shrimp, hush puppies, hell, lobster. It's all just to get the ranch into your face. Blue cheese is a sometimes food. Okay, so first off, we're gonna start with option one. This is pure black cherry juice, no sugar added. Just straight up cherry juice. We have a gallon of that here. Yeah, fried shrimp and ranch dressing. That and like a, like a Sam Adams. Peak, man, peak. It says it's fresh pressed. Creepshow says I've used that for a tart cherry meat I made. Tell us how it went. This might be a good debate point for when you guys start voting on this. Larry, I just misread that and thought you were saying we needed to do a blue cheese mead and I had like a little bit of a, maybe? No, maybe? No. Kind of moment there. <laughs> so our second option for a fermentable sugar for this brew is going to be, <laughs> looks like, I don't want to say what this looks like. This is V8 lower sugar sweet greens juice. Look at that, look at that label. Listen to what is in this. Vegetable juice, which is comprised of filtered water and concentrated juices of yellow carrot, sweet potatoes, and spinach. Fruit juice, which is filtered water and concentrated juices of white grapes, apples, and pineapples. <laughs> Creep show, I just saw your $5 donation. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll magician the rest of this. I got you. I got you, fam. I lost my place now. Filtered water of concentrated juices of white grapes, apples, pineapples, Filtered water, citric acid, natural flavoring, banana puree, vitamin C, beta carotene. Somebody's gonna have to look this one up and tell me what it is. Huito juice, that's H-U-I-T-O, Huito juice, 
concentrate, that's for color, as well as watermelon juice concentrate for color. And just, you know, I don't know what watermelon they juiced. Maybe they just juiced the rinds. <laughs> but that is not the color I would expect out of something made with watermelon juice. All right, y'all ready for this? This is for you, creep show. So our other ingredients are tomato juice and Tezo passion tea. <laughs> I feel seen. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, so tomato juice. There's, I've seen attempts at tomato wines before. I tried to use tomato paste as a nutrient one time. It was an unpleasant experience. 100% juice contains tomato juice from concentrate, salt, citric acid, and ascorbic acid. We, can, we got plenty of time on this show to do country fruit wines and little one gallon wine kits. This, this is science right here. Water, organic hibiscus flowers, organic orange peel, organic cinnamon, organic cane sugar, and organic natural flavor with citric acid. It's caffeine free. Those are our options. Rob's got our straw pull up. Sweet green juice. Did anybody look up what the uh, huito juice is? Fruit that's a delight to taste buds and immunity provider to the body. Okay, we are now tied. Black cherry juice and Tezo tea are tied with six votes each. There you go. Now we're jumping up. Tezo tea is now in the lead. The one I thought y'all would not be interested in at all. I am curious to taste this before we get started. This may be difficult to balance because it's got all these balancing elements already in it. And uh, we've got three boxes to go through still of stuff to vote on. CJ's on Team Tomato. Team T, Team T. I shouldn't have worn a black shirt today. My beard like blends in with the, the black shirt. And it appears that we are going to be brewing with Tezo Passion Tea as our fermentable sugar. We uh, have to add some sugars to this so there's stuff for the yeast to eat. Y'all know that yeast is a fungus? Yes, I did know that. It's a single-celled eukaryote. We're gonna start with our tannin box. Thank you. Looks really gross. It does look really gross. Have you voted on anything yet? Yeah, we're, we're gonna be brewing with Tezo oh, tea. Oh, fun. Yeah, Sam. Sam the Wonder Dog is in here. Hello. And there's going to be enough sugar in here? There's not. We're going to be adding sugar. They're going to be voting on that here in a minute. These are going to be the tannins that we're going to use, or one of these is going to be the tannin that we're going to use to balance this brew. So tannin, that thing that provides body and mouthfeel and sometimes astringency, depending on how much you use, it's the thing that kind of... I, I Think of tannin like a picnic blanket. You could go and you could, you could put all your food and your beverages right on the wet grass and have your picnic and be miserable. Or you can roll out your picnic blanket so you have a platform with which all of your food and drink can be supported. That's what tannin does in a wine or a mead. It provides that platform, that thing that kind of holds those flavors up for you so you can taste the sweetness and you can taste the acid tannin snuggles it for you. We need to choose our tannin for this brew. The first potential option is this jar of jam. This is a persimmon jam that was canned on the 19th of November 2019. Not by me, by Anna's grandmother. And for those of you who haven't had persimmons, they are incredibly tannic. There is a lot of astringency, and that's the uh, that's the, the type of tannin that this is gonna provide. Now you have to factor that our tea here has hibiscus and orange peel and cinnamon, three things that are already gonna be providing some levels of tannin. And so we may not want a tannin that is as aggressive as this persimmon jam. This is an unusual one. And this one, if we do this properly, should also provide a bit of sweetness, like sensation of sweetness, but it shouldn't be a fermentable sugar in there. It should be, um, it's, it's not sugar that provides that sensation of sweetness. 
This is licorice root. Licorice root. Everybody knows what licorice tastes like, right? Licorice, I feel like, is the most divisive of the candies. Like, you can argue M&M's versus Skittles, Crunch Bar versus a Butterfinger, but when you get people arguing thumbs up or thumbs down on black licorice, it is divisive. Also, red licorice is not real licorice, so I don't know if that's a controversial opinion, too. Our third option in here is another root, and it's a root that is not commonly used anymore. The whole plant basically in its adolescent stage is edible. The blossoms, the leaves, the root. Good guess, Paula. Uh, it's dandelion root. We have on our YouTube channel a wonderful dandelion mead recipe. I really wanted to use dandelion root in that recipe and Anna talked me out of it and she was probably wise to have done so but if I ever do dandelion mead again which I don't know if I will because it's a heck of a lot of work I will probably substitute dandelion root as my tannin element in that mead. For a while at work before pandemic lockdowns I was trying to reduce my coffee intake, so I switched to dandelion tea. I told myself after noon I would only drink dandelion tea. And I went through a whole box of, of, uh, of tea bags of dandelion tea. It was fine. It was one of those like you gotta learn to like it kind of flavors, which I'm not always here for. It, I feel like against this tea, dandelion root might play real nice. And lastly, We've got this little morsel. This is called a black lime. You can probably see here that I've stabbed this one to uh, access the inside of it. And then just this spent a week hanging out in the food dehydrator to turn into this little tarry, molassesy, super pungent, super limey, super citrusy little nugget of flavor. Super delicious. At some point, I am going to make a mead that is entirely centered around black limes. I feel like it's a real doing the most kind of ingredient because it takes a week to prepare them. They're so good. You got a you got a stew that needs a little extra zhuzh, smash of a black lime, throw that in there. Take you to Flavor Town. Skeeter pee with black lime, that could be good. Rob will throw up the tannin. Options are licorice root, black lime, persimmon jam, or dandelion root for our tannin edition. You are voting on what tannin we should use for this brew. And uh, it might be a good time to talk about our yeast. Are y'all interested in hearing what yeast we're gonna brew with today? So Paula probably can guess what this one is. Y'all are correct. This is Bonanza. It is a crisper gene edited yeast from Omega Labs bring this front and center so y'all can see what that looks like. There's a little bit of hooch on top of that. It's mead. Been in my fridge since December 12th. Omega is using that now to deactivate certain genes in brewing yeasts. They have one called Sundu and one called Bonanza. This one here is Bonanza. Bonanza is a Hefeweizen yeast made for quick brewed beers with big interesting flavors. Uh, once you get it up to a higher temperature, and this one at higher temperatures in the 80s of fermentation temperature range, you're going to start to get banana flavors. Some Hefeweizen strains will give you big bubblegummy flavors. Some will give you big juicy fruity flavors. So that's where Sundew came from. But this one is called Bonanza because it's very, very banana focused. Now that said, I didn't have good luck with this yeast when I brewed with it. But it's expensive yeast, so I put the slurry into a mason jar to forget about, and then I remembered it this week. <laughs> Concerned with the lack of clout. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've got a fresh pack of Lutra in the fridge, and the slurry from that will eventually make its way over to Brew's lab. But I wanna do a traditional mead with orange blossom honey with it, and so I want a fresh, untarnished yeasts um, for that. And I don't want to have to go through, like I don't want to use washed yeast for it. I want to use it straight out of the pack because it's for a video for our YouTube. And it looks like black lime was in the lead. 
So black lime will adjust our tannin. Now we get into our, our supplemental sugar. This has basically no sugar in it. It's a very small amount of sugar. This is gonna be almost more than our fermentable sugar. It's gonna be a base. So we gotta add the treble. If I don't get a donation for that. Okay, so we need, we need a sugar to go in here. Our first option for our uh, secondary sugar is going to be juice concentrate. I'll turn off this banner here in a minute so you can see these. But we have orange juice concentrate and apple juice concentrate. If you choose this option, we're using both. So just keep in mind we'll be fermenting orange juice. Man, y'all are a tough crowd. Flail Snail, thank you for that $10 donation to say, boo. I'll take it. Look, y'all just y'all just funded most of next week's episode. So thank you. Second potential sugar option is light brown sugar. It is the lesser of the brown sugars. Dark brown sugar clearly is the better brown sugar. I wanted to change it up. I think brown sugar in this could be excellent. Another option like this. Ugh. Granulated sugar would just give you sweet. And obviously in this brew, where we're planning for no to minimal um, residual sugar on the other end, we're hoping that the yeast will consume most of the sugar that we put in there. You're just going to get alcohol out of that. Back during the holidays, Anna was into this idea of creating hot cocoa bombs. My sister's kids are very into sugar. They're very sugar and chocolate obsessed right now. She didn't want to do something like erythritol where, where they might have a sense that something's up, that they're getting hoodwinked. So we were going to just make it a sugary drink for them, which is fine because it's a special occasion, right? She explored a lot of sugar options and found that there's this thing you can do where at a low temperature in the oven, you can toast cane sugar. So this cane sugar, you can toast it. We have a Vitamix blender and Vitamix blenders can blend any and everything. So she took her toasted sugar, which gets some of those Maillard reactions in there, some of that roastiness and kind of like a marshmallowiness minus the vanilla, but like that like toasted is like the best term I can get. Anyway, it's toasted sugar, right? Well, she turned that into toasted powdered sugar by blending it in our Vitamix. You've got fruity and intense. You've got rich and molassesy. You've got fairly neutral and you've got this toasty, roasty, marshmallowy kind of flavor. So these are your options. Rob will drop a straw poll in there, and we are now voting on what our adjunct sugar, our secondary sugar for this brew will be. So for those of you who are curious where our style came from, our members and patrons vote on that before the show starts. So if you'd like to become a VIP member, you can do that by clicking join at the bottom of any of our YouTube videos. Um, or you can become a patron through our Patreon. That's available in the sidebar link at our website, doingthemost.org. So we uh, allow voting for that, and y'all choose what we're going to do. Most of the chatter around that happens in our Discord server. That's discord.doingthemost.org. And you can connect your Patreon or YouTube accounts to Discord and get access to that private members-only channel. So our members and patrons voted for a wine this week. Our wine base is going to be Tezo Passion Tea. That is a tea with hibiscus, orange peel, and cinnamon. So we might as well call that. <laughs> might as well call that. I think, I think that's an obvious and fun choice. The base of our wine is going to be Tezo Passion Tea, supplemented with toasted powdered sugar. This is... Looking like it's gonna be kind of a low alcohol brew. It'll be interesting to see what we get our gravity up to. And then our tannin balancer is going to be this beautiful homemade, home dried black lime. Okay, so here's the deal y'all. We've got, and I want y'all to discuss this in the chat. I want you to debate over this as best you can. We've got the wild card box. Right now we have a wonderful, light, airy, gently spiced wine going. And why ruin that, right? This is our wild card box. There's four ingredients in here. And 
Basically any of them will ruin this. Pandora's box. It's full of serpents. It'll turn you into stone if you look at it or melt your face. If we open this box, we, one, if we open this box, we have to use an ingredient from within inside this box. And two, if we use one of these ingredients, it's probably going to ruin this brew. Do we open the box? Rob, can you hit us with that straw poll? Yes or no, do we open the wild card box? We've been having fun with the wild card box the, the last couple of episodes, but Anna said to me after the last episode, you don't want to just make it where you always open the box. And so by putting things in here that will ruin the brew, I have definitely incentivized not opening the box. Okay, so now the box is off the, well, it's on the table, literally, but the box is off the table. Whip the vote. We're not going to use any of the ingredients in the box, correct? Y'all have decided that. You have made that decision that we are not brewing with anything from the box. Next question is, do you want to see what's inside the box? The closest that could work, oh, no, nah, you don't want that. Tell you what, I will post one of the other items in our members-only channel on Discord so y'all can go and see a second item in the members only channel. If you want access to that members only channel, all you gotta do is become a YouTube member. It's just go to any of our YouTube videos and click join at the bottom or become a patron. Uh, and the Patreon link is on our website at doingthemost.org. And then you can uh, just connect your Patreon or YouTube accounts to Discord and find that free, find that uh, members only channel. So I'm going to, how about what I do is I will I will pull the ingredient that didn't fit in the box and then I will I will send a picture right now to the members only discord of another ingredient from the box so you can see what we were working with here. Sound good? So if you're a member, uh, a VIP member or patron, those folks have their names on the screen right now, you get to see one of those options in a photo that I just took and sent to the members only Discord. And then the one that didn't fit in the box, <laughs> so stupid, was this enormous, like, like school cafeteria sized can of fruit cocktail in extra light syrup. <laughs> Y'all can now see what two of the four options were. And I'll leave it as a mystery as to what the other two were. We didn't choose the wild card. Now, now we gotta make our wine. This is the most exciting part of the show where we mix up a wine live. Okay, so first thing I wanna do though is get a bead on what we're working with for the gravity of our Tezo tea. I mean, that's what it tastes. It tastes <laughs> You might <laughs> have to pour you some of this off. I said it's got kind of like a marshmallowy. Yeah. Like in the in the um, hot cocoa, it it adds like a marshmallow element. And it's less sweet than than plain sugar. Yeah. And that was what we ran into with the cocoa was that we didn't account for that, so we had pretty chocolate. It's really easy if you have time. Just put. A baking sheet of sugar in your oven and just let, let it ride. Yeah. Set it and forget it. Yeah. Do you remember Ron Popeil? No. He was a, an infomercial guy and he had that oven where you put the thing in, you put the top down, and then the whole audience would go, Set it and forget it. You just. Set it and forget it. You had too much screen time. <laughs> Uh, I, I, as a kid, I loved infomercials. <laughs> I would watch hours of yeah. infomercials. Shout out to my boy Ross Perot for providing hours of entertainment as a child. All right, our, our gravity on this, this is so low. There's no sugar in this, basically. Yeah, that's what I told you. <laughs> our gravity on this is 1.015. 6.68 ounces of sugar. Sugar goes in. Whoever's the closest without going over gets a jar of cuttlefish ink mailed directly to their home. 
Just kidding about that, by the way. We are at 1.03, I would say 1.033. It's it's right on, the meniscus is, is bending right up on 1.033 to 1.034. So let's take a look at what a black line looks like inside. Kind of cracks open just like an egg would, and the inside turns basically to like papery tar. This is my last black lime too, I gotta make more. Dang, that smells good. Now I want black lime tea. So um, there are a couple ways of making black limes rub duck soup. You can boil it in salt water and then hang it outside in the hot sun to dry. That's the traditional way of doing it, but I don't want salt in mine because I don't use them. I use them more for tea than I do for culinary purposes. Uh, so what I do is I poke a hole in them with a knife, and I have a food dehydrator that I've modified, so it sits just a bit taller on the inside. I just modified that by removing the netting from one of the trays. So I put my punctured limes in there, and then set it on the fruit and vegetable setting, and leave it for a week. And after that, they go completely dry, and they're dark, black, earthy, rich, delicious. Last thing we've got to do is pitch our yeast. I'm going to try and get some of this meat off of here. When you're storing a slurry, generally you want to leave a little bit of the hooch on top of that to protect it from the elements, unless you are doing washed yeast. Uh, there's a process video for that on our YouTube channel. There's a little bit of banana in there. I won't I won't pretend like there's not, but there's also like a B.O. kind of smell in there too. Can you imagine how terrible I would feel afterward? Bonanza Ale Yeast is pitched. The mead you poured... Oh, you want me to drink this? Tastes like a hydromel. Ugh. That bonanza flavor is just so offensive. Should come out just shy of 5% alcohol. And I'm gonna call it at 1.033, because I believe that's where that hit. Ugh, this is so banana-y. Like, not good banana. Maybe with a little sweetness it would be okay. Our YouTube members and our Patreon patrons will vote on what style we're going to brew next week. So I do want to thank our supporters. That's our membership, our VIP members, and our patrons. Those are the folks who sponsor this channel. And uh, of course, if you want to sponsor the channel or sponsor this show specifically, you can become a member or patron or you can donate with the Streamlabs link there. That's streamlabs.com slash doing the most okay. And we also have an Instagram and we love interacting with everyone, all the homebrewing community on Instagram. So that's Instagram at doing the most okay on Instagram. So that's where we are there. So this was a pretty easy build. We didn't even have to put a recipe up on the screen. Just mixing a bunch of stuff together. I like that. Y'all are amazing. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll uh, see you next time. Bye.